another episode of the intellectual stew with james kirkland where we are not sipping tea but instead we are serving stew and uh i'm super super excited about that tonight we are dealing with part two of a subject that we have decided to call uh the plot to destroy black families the plot to destroy black family so uh if you are here if you're on the show now or if you're listening uh feel free to call a neighbor feel free to call a friend let them know that james kirkland is on with the intellectual stew and we're going to continue the conversation about the plot to destroy the black family and when i say the plot to destroy the black family I'm talking about the black family at large, at large. So, uh, and I am excited tonight because I have my buddy with me. I have my friend with me, uh, Mr. Tuck. Mr. Tuck, say hello, Tuck. Hey, how everybody doing? All right, Tuck's back on with us again tonight. Uh, we enjoyed the conversation so much on last week that we decided to bring him back. And I, uh, you know what? I like that wisdom that, uh, that he brings. And so that's why I wanted him to come back and uh, you, if you see if you're in studio you can see he has his pen he has his pad he called me earlier today he wanted to know what kind of angle or what kind of approach we were going to have and uh and i'm here tonight and i'm thinking tuck you know i cut you off a little bit last week disco got on me about that but i wanted to back up that back that thing up and try it again tuck is celebrating uh last week he celebrated 38 years of marriage y'all everybody clap your hands for tuck i'm excited about that that tuck uh, yeah. is able to celebrate 38 years go ahead go ahead and uh, sh do a shout out to your wife one more time for me tuck. Um, to the soulmate the one that uh the lord created for me uh-huh my name is rethia hey darling how you doing be back there soon so we can get ready to hit the road and i can take you out and enjoy a vacation so you're gonna go enjoy where y'all going Going to Myrtle Beach. Going to Myrtle yeah. Beach. Going to put your feet in the sand? Yeah, yes, sir. <laughs> How was your holiday? It was fine. It was did fine. Get, did you get some barbecue? No, 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 no. You don't do no pork and all that stuff? Well, I do it just didn't do it yesterday. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Let the pig rest. Let the pig rest. Yesterday. Well, the pig needs a little rest every now and then. I'm trying. To, I'm really trying to watch my diet. I'm trying as, as I'm on this thing called the path to better. I'm trying, and, I, and the doctor's telling me that my weight is going up and my cholesterol is going up and my blood pressure is going up i got to make sure that i watch what i eat because i don't want to have a lot of the complications later on in life so um but let's get back into the conversation we uh last week we kind of started touching on this conversation as it relates to the black family being under attack or the plot to destroy the black family and there were certain things that we brought up last week that we highlighted and we're going to touch that and let me put this let me put this caveat out there or let me put this pen this is not a bash sister section session, okay? Amen. We're not bash. I mean, uh, that's just one component of what's wrong with our communities. You know, we uh, you have good and bad people in everything. Would you agree with that? I agree with you one hundred percent. People people speak about the other opposite sex as though 
everything is so absolute, like there are no good men left or there are no good women left or all women are messed up or all men are not. You got bad and good people in everything. But the mm -hmm. challenge is to reach enough people uh, so that enough of us, if we do it right, this is this 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 is the thing with me, Tuck. Um, I think that that uh, we have gotten so far away from that which which is supposed to be central that we don't even realize what the regular normal should be. I think mm -hmm. we've created a new normal, if you will, and 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 we've become so comfortable functioning in dysfunction that the dysfunction has almost become our normal. Does that make sense to you? It makes a lot of sense. So when you get to a place where uh, individuals lack morals, uh, where uh, where people can live any kind, I used to, in preaching, I call it the anything, uh, anything goes society. Yeah. <laughs> Good name. Yeah. So when, so, and, and that's what we are, you know, we, you got the me too movement, you got the anything goes, you can't offend nobody. If you offend somebody, I think if, we need to go back to offending people. I went. I went and visited. A, <laughs> I went and visited a friend of mine. She came in town uh, this weekend, and so she came in. And really, the main reason I went over there to see her is because her mom was there, and her mom and I were. You know, we were. You know, she was a very intricate person in my life when I lived there in Arkansas back in the day. Mm -hmm. And I remember one time we were this was long before preaching time. Okay, it was before I started preaching. We were going to go to a club one night called PJs, right? And so we're leaving Little Rock, going to PJs. So my my friend and my friend and I we went to pick this young lady up. And so we got there, her and her friend were all dressed and ready to go out and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But her, but I think the next day was going to be a holiday and mama was cleaning 30 pounds of chitlins. Ooh. And mama said, if you're going to clean, if, if y'all going to eat 30 pounds of these chitlins, y'all going to clean 10 pounds of these chitlins. Mm -hmm. And before we left, she made sure her daughter and her friend came in that kitchen and they participated in cleaning those chitlins. Mamas don't do that no more. No, they don't. They don't tell. They don't tell them the truth, Doc. I they mean, don't. I see some stuff folk wear, that folk be wearing sometimes, Doc. Mm -hmm. And bro, if my mama would have saw my sister wearing something like that, she'd have been like, "Take your behind back upstairs and try it again." You see everything. Doc. You see everything. Nothing left to the imagination. <laughs> Nothing. I mean, it's, I mean, you look on Facebook, you look everywhere. It's soft porn right now because everybody wants to be a superstar. Everybody <laughs> wants to be. Porn. Everybody wants to be a, uh, a a superstar. Everybody wants to be a movie star. You got them walking with the little cameras up in the air, and these are the people that are raising our children. Mm -hmm. and, and and that's what I wanted to segue into the lesson because where we were last week, we talked about how uh, the slave master so he 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 invested so much into the black woman because he knew the influence that she had on the family. And you said the magic word, What's influence. That? The key word is influence now. But what did you do with influence? Hmm. Now, what they wanted her to do after they emasculated the man, remember we said, mm -hmm. we talked about it last week, Willie Lynch said they would, they would set him, they would tar and feather and would set him on fire. They would uh, have two horses, time to two horses, rip him apart. They would beat him with the whip. They would do all of these things, right? Mm -hmm. And when they did these things, they did it in front of the man, right? I mean, in front of the woman, so that when the woman saw him, she would lose respect for him. And then she also purposely, they ain't mentioned the baby girl, but they mentioned the baby boy. Mm -hmm. And the baby boy would look at the man being emasculated, and then, therefore, he would turn to his mother. Mm -hmm. And so because the mother would see how they did him, then she uh, kind of went to an independent state of frozen fear and she began to raise her child, her boy, out of fear because she didn't ever want to put him in a position to go through what her husband went through. And so therefore she put a limit on him and she she raised him to be mentally weak while being physically strong. In other words, go take the trash out, <laughs> go cut the yard, go do these things, but these are just menial things that that display your physical strength but don't make you mentally stronger. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. And so what, and we just, and for those that are listening, we're just backtracking on what we talked about last week. And what it ended up doing was it ended up raising the children in reverse because while she's making him mentally weak and physically strong, she's raising her daughter to be independently strong, right? Mm. All right. So in the process, what happens is, and, and as we juxtapose that to how we're living in now, what has transpired over time is that the black man has become emasculated 
and the black woman has become empowered and elevated. What you think? Yeah. Uh, you said that just right. Okay. You know, um, the main thing about a woman with a man is she inspires him mm -hmm. with her sense of emotion, uh, the way they're driven. Uh, man lacks emotion and compassion. Man knows strength, mm -hmm. what to do. But the woman knows how to do. With her nurturing and with them distorting her image of the man, mm -hmm. because she cannot influence a man that she cannot trust. Wow. And if she don't trust him to be a man, how can she ever influence him? And influence is the right word. Because look at Eve with Adam. She got him to do mm -hmm. what he wasn't supposed to do. Wow. Look at Samson and Delilah. We can go on and on and on. A woman has influence over a man. Gotcha. But when they distorted that, Man cannot get his inspiration or his influence from his divine partner. Wow. Because we need that woman to be a complete man mm -hmm. because we cannot do it by ourselves, nor can they do it by themselves. Gotcha. It works together. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And gotcha. if we are not working together because of hidden influences, if she's not giving me inspiration to expire to be more than what I am, then what am I going to be? Exactly. So when they distorted that image of what a man is to the woman, she could no longer influence him to do the right thing, to stand up and be a man. Well, she lost faith in creator. him. But then she lost, she, lost, she lost faith in him because when they, emas when they emasculated him like they did, mm -hmm. then he lost his position somewhat in the home at that particular point, if you ask me. Yeah, well, because the, the woman fail to realize or understand the subliminal attack that was being used to change her image of what a man really is. That's okay. Unpack that a little bit more for me. Because we said women, but like you said earlier, just like a man must be a man, a woman also must be a woman. Mm -hmm. When we look at what we have today, the majority, and one popular uh, saying that a lot of people ain't going to like, but it's the truth. We got so many chicken heads running around here now that ain't even funny. A woman is not judged by how tight her clothes are. Oh. How much of a figure she may have. How she can drop it like it's hot. Mm. No. What you drop like it's hot is what you drop on that table. And keep that man at home. Because if you feeding him, he going to stay home. Because there's one thing about us. When we get through with a good meal, we want to lay down and go to sleep. Yeah. Am I right about it? Now that you're right so about if that. your man is running around out there in the streets, maybe it's because he hungry and he's looking for something to eat somewhere else. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> so let, 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 let's get back. <laughs> let's, get, let, let's bring it back. All right, so well, now this is where the premise kind of uh, kind of hit us last week. This is where we stuck out at last week. Uh, uh, remember, uh, in, in, during Willie Lynch's letter, when we talked about the breaking of the African slave, uh, there was a portion in there where he said, where he wrote, before the breaking process, we had to be alertly on guard at all times. In other words, we saw the strength. We, we saw, here it is. We saw the strength in their unity because no matter how we beat him, no matter how we tried to break him as a family, we couldn't break it. Because, watch this, as much as we beat him, uh, emasculated him, he could always go home to her. And when he got home to her, she would restore it. She could wipe his, she could wipe his wounds. She could tell him, baby, it's going to be all right. She could, she could offer her lap for him to lay his head in. But when they said that we would literally beat him to death, we would tar him, set him on fire, we would do those things, and we would kill his image. That's the thing right there. Mm -hmm. We would kill his image in front of her. Then it says, before the breaking process, we had to be alertly on guard at all times. But since we broke him, now we can sleep soundly, for out of frozen fear, his woman stands guard for us. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and in standing guard for us, it's not a physical stance, it's more of a subliminal stance. Because she's doing the work. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Makes a lot of sense. Okay. She's doing the work because she's raising the children. 
And they said, according to this, that they would raise her, raise the children in reverse hmm. because the female would raise her daughter to be psychologically independent. Mm -hmm. In other words, he wanted her, but the child, but the boy would be mentally weak. But let, let, let me do this. Let me okay. ask you to do this. Okay. If you will, uh, could you read that letter? I read the portion I read last week? Yeah, because I had a couple of people ask me about, you know, they said we brought out portions, but they did okay. had not read the... the okay, I'm going to read the excerpt we read last week. It said, take the female and run a series of tests on her to see if she will submit to your desires willingly. That's key. Then it says, test her in every way because she is the most important factor for good economics. That's key. If she shows you any signs of resistance in submitting completely to your will, do not hesitate to use the bullwhip on her to extract that last bit of breath out of her. Take care not to kill her, for in doing so, you spoil good economics. When in complete submission, she will train her offsprings in the early years to submit to labor when they become of age, understanding is the best thing. Then it says, therefore, we should go deeper into this area uh, of, of the subject matter concerning what we have produced here in this breaking process of the female N-word. We have reversed the relationship. In her natural, civilized state, she would have a strong dependency on the uncivilized male. That would be natural. She's supposed to have a strong, strong dependency on us. And she would have a limited protective tendency towards her independent male offspring and would raise male offsprings to be dependent like her. Nature had provided this. Listen, nature had de, de, had provided for this type of balance. But here it is. We were this is the this is the white people talking during Willie Lynch's time. We reversed nature. By burning and pulling a civilized inward apart and bull whooping the other to the point of death, all in her presence by her being left alone, unprotected, with the male, here it is, with the male image destroyed. The ordeal caused her to move from her psychologically independent state to a frozen independent state in this frozen psychological state of independence, she raises her male, where well, they actually say she will raise, future tense, she will raise her male and female offspring in reverse roles for fear of the young male's life. She will psychologically train him to be mentally weak and independent, but physically strong because she has become psychologically independent. She will train her female offsprings to be psychologically independent what have you got? You've got the N-word woman out front and the N-man behind her and scared. And this is a perfect situation for sound sleep and economics. Now, uh, make a long story short. Mm -hmm. That's a long story, too. In essence, we're going to change a woman to the point to where she forgets what a mother is. What a mother is? Exactly. Oh, is because it, is it's it, in the nurturing. Is it, is it forget what a mother is or changing the nature of the mother? It changes what a mother is. Okay, okay. Because okay. we got plenty of them that's having babies. But are they really mothers? It, now it, think about the role of mm -hmm. what mama plays in the family with the nurturing, the mm -hmm. upbringing what she gives to her husband or her man, to what she gives to her children to make sure they're raised properly, they're taken care of properly, regardless to what. Now, when that element is taken out, what do you have? You got a woman, but you don't have a mother. Wow. Look at our children today. We got women, but where the mothers? Well, mothers, I tell, I tell, I tell people that the world, in my opinion, the world got worse. The world got worse mm -hmm. or started to go down when grandmothers got younger. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it, it just like I said, people's right. roles just really started to change and started to reverse and all those things. And, and it, you know, and it, it might have, and this is the thing, 
is and I want to get into this a little bit a little bit more tonight because I I, um, I said where we are now. We, uh, what I talked about last week is where we left off was said when black men and black women separate because when when that seed was planted where the male image male female where the black male image started to be destroyed in front of her and not only destroyed but diluted where it got to the point where eventually because you got what happens like I was telling somebody today when you see a tree. You see the outcome of what a seed did, right? Mm -hmm. The seed was planted a long time ago, right? Mm -hmm. But then 20, 30 years later, you see the outcome of that seed. So when seeds were planted back in slavery, you don't necessarily see all the ramifications of what was planted in this generation, but you start to see it generations in the future, right? And so mm -hmm. every generation, every generation, then that then what was normal, what was functional, uh, when it becomes dysfunctional, you kind of forget what functional looked like, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And so when 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 women started to lose uh, respect for the male image, and it's more so in younger women now, you know, because the old, like I said, the older ones, some of them still get kind of holding on to what grandmama taught them. You know what I'm saying? When the older women knew their place. Oh Lord, don't be careful. I, I don't. No, 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 no. Don't get me in no trouble on my show. I don't want to. When I, a woman knows her place roll can we say roll place oh jesus he's older than you me, know you you know plenty of folk can act he's That's older than i am so he can say it if he wants to but yeah. you got to know your place okay okay so when you know your place it's just like with the children a child can have a child mm -hmm. but a child can't raise a child that, you got a point and there's so many children raising children now but where the mothers mm -hmm. it takes a special upbringing, nurturing, the whole nine yards from knowing your place to be able to grow into what a woman, a mother should be. Okay, That's not something that comes natural. It's something that's instilled in you mm -hmm. from a previous generation. Previous, okay, previous generation. Right. And so each generation, if you don't have that rock mm -hmm. or that, that source to draw from from the previous and that's where we are now we don't have that and because that male image has been destroyed and we talked about that about that down through the years because that uh, what the system we gonna call it the system mm -hmm. government whatever you want to call it uh the system has always wanted to destroy the male image and a lot of it if we look at it right here has to do with economics especially in the south Always. Because in the South, they needed slaves to keep the economy going. So mm -hmm. if if uh, I read a book one time called The uh, the uh, the Richest Man in Babylon, and they referred to money as kids. And each kid, in the, and, and when you loan out money, then the interest would be slaves and all that. And then the slave kids. And when slaves mm -hmm. have children, then the slave, then the kids become slaves. You know, and it kind of keeps a perpetual mm -hmm. process. So when the woman was in this breaking process, teaching this young man, how to be psycho, I mean, how to be mentally weak. She knew that she was where well, they knew that they were making her build future slaves. These because once these boys were 16 years old, they would basically be broken already and they would work from now on. So when the Emancipation Proclamation came about and the slaves were set free, then what did you do about all this free labor? <laughs> but you still have this you still have this mentality though, right? Because the woman still had raised the children how they how she raised them. So when after Reconstruction, I, I was reading that today, because after Reconstruction, uh, W.E.B. Du Bois uh, said something. He said, the slave went free, stood a brief moment in the sun, and then moved back again towards slavery. Because hmm. he didn't know no better. And, 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 and they knew how to get us back towards slavery. Because we talked about it last week. You had vagrancy laws back then. If you didn't have a job, Jim Crow, Jim Crow, doing Jim Crow, doing the vagrancy laws. If you didn't have a job, if you were unemployed, that was against the law and they would put you in jail. And then once they put you in jail, then the uh, companies would come and hire your work out. And then you would end up, in essence, being back in slavery again. And so this happened. So that's, they've always tried to do things that would get us in trouble or would make us cause us to be, uh, become in trouble. And then when we become in trouble, then we would end up in jail. And then if we ended up in jail, then we would always end up back working for free <laughs> again. And when you and when you look at it, we've always been the target audience. Well, when you think about it, our number one problem is 
our failure to understand and believe. Just because you don't acknowledge a thing does not mean that it does not exist. Okay. Um, when we look at it, okay, a lot of people now are saying, well, what are you really talking about? What are you really saying? What we're saying is the greatest deception there is in the world today is, and we refer to theology with that, okay. is Satan convincing folk that he does not exist. Okay. Well, when we convince ourselves that no one is behind this plot. Wow. That's good. To change our way of life, our way of thinking, the way we look at each other, mm -hmm. then we become just as ignorant as they want us to be. Wow. Because when you look at it, as we discussed last week about the Willie Lynch letter, mm -hmm. some say it's a hoax, this, that, and other. My point was somebody had to have a mind to design or design that diabolical scheme. Mm. So just because you don't think somebody is plotting against us don't mean that they're not. That's exactly. You may not see it on your level because of your limited way of thinking. Wow. And they will at times set us up like chess pieces. They'll move here knowing that if they leave us to ourselves, we'll make two, three, four dumb moves and still be playing right into their hand. Isn't that something? And that's exactly what we're looking at. Because a lot of people are saying, well, you know, y'all talking a whole lot, and what are you really saying? Is it the man or is it the woman? Is it the mother or is it the father? It's, awesome. it's the scheme behind all of it to destroy and bring down the number one family that was created. Exactly. And I don't care what nobody said when you trace it down through the history books, through the Bible, whole nine yards. They were black. <laughs> Y'all might not like it when you tell the truth, but that's just the way it is. And they, the number one family was black. And 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 they saw the strength. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got me, you got when they brought us over the, the middle passage, man, you had slaves that said, I'd rather die. I'd rather jump off of this ship and die in the ocean than be a slave. You understand what I'm saying? So they knew the strength that was there. So how do you dismantle the strength? You have to devise a scheme. And this is my thing right here, Doc. We are the, I don't see other cultures talking about the opposite sex like you see us talk about the opposite sex. The women know their place. Stop. You keep, you're going to get me in trouble. Listen, that's him talking that right there. So, y'all don't be right. Now, y'all can write it. me. Yeah, yeah I can I write me. It. I don't care. I, I can hold my own. But the thing, no, but my point is that you see memes talking about black men ain't this. Women, to me, black men talking about black women ain't this. I mean, all this. And we're the only, I think we're the only race that does that. Because, and, and the last time I checked, a divided house can't stand. Mm. But but James Brown, they caught all that kind of stuff. But James Brown used to sing songs like I'm black and I'm proud. But he also said, uh sung a song and said, This is a man's, man's world, world. But it wouldn't be nothing without a woman and a girl, which means it takes everybody. Yeah. And then even Marvin Marvin Gaye, what'd he say? What's going on? You know, mm -hmm. he's trying to figure out because mother, mother. we became so <laughs> divided, man. And the thing is, is that during the struggle. And I like to talk to my pastor and people like that. And, and even you, you know, during the movement, uh, when when Dr. King and Malcolm X and all of them went during the movement, we were so unified. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was a sense of unity within the family structure. Now, I know there were some people that were against King and all that kind of stuff and thought he was a troublemaker and all that kind of stuff. But the familial structure was strong. I mean, there was black husbands. Black wife, I mean, there was husband and wife were together. We had the 2.5 and the dog. We had children. I mean, and, and then the hood was a lot stronger because everybody lived in the hood. You had the teachers in the hood. You had the lawyers in the hood. You had the doctors in the hood. You had the preachers in the hood. But then with the Fair Housing Act of 1968, then all of a sudden they said that if you got enough money, you can move. That was a trick, too. Yeah. But the, go back and look at it. Who had the greatest influence? over you in life? Your mother or your father? Well, I'm, my, I'm a little different. My daddy raised me. My, my dad raised me. I'm okay. little, yeah, my, da my, my dad, my parents got a divorce when I was like young and then my dad remarried. And But my dad was, you know what I mean? That's who you saw. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, to go back, think about it. Who has the most influence in forming a home 
a family. Of course, the, one, the female, the woman. Because of the nurturing of the mother, when she knows her role. Okay, I like that. And she knows what a mother should do. How many men made it out that field from being beaten from picking that cotton, but were still able to go on because when they got home, that woman, that mother, absolutely nurtured them back to health to get back out there and do it again. Exactly. And they, but they knew that, so that's why they started to try to plant those seeds of division. But and how it, many women today know that their man needs nurturing? Yeah, needs encouragement needs to be influenced, need to be known that you're proud of him. You inspire him. You want him to do this, that, and other. Instead of tearing him down. And it's and, and you know what? It's so much easier to reciprocate mm. when somebody has, when somebody restores you. You know what I mean? I, when I'm not married anymore, but on my worst days, <laughs> when, when I had a bad day, man, it was just something, you know, my middle name is Henry. She didn't call me by my first name. She called me Henry. She said, Henry. I hated that too. <laughs> but she said, Henry, come here. And, and she knew she could be, she could pick up, pick that up. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And she'd be like, come here, lay down. What's wrong? You know? And that meant so much, but I hear women nowadays, they'll say, I ain't finna, I ain't finna give him the big head. Exactly. I ain't finna, you know, I ain't finna feed your ego. What? Hmm. That's so backwards. You should feed his ego. And when you feed his ego, he'll turn around. But we ain't talking about the subject. We're going to, we got to stay on the subject. So we talk about a divided family, mm -hmm. divided family. Uh, well, when, when black men and women, black women separate, it leads to a divided family. When we go from it, when we have a divided family, then we end up having a divided community. Mm -hmm. And what we have in this community now is we have a, 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 a divorce rate that is out through the roof. That's really too high. And unfortunately, black women mm -hmm. is the, are the only group that had the, a higher divorce rate than they do a higher marriage rate. In other words, People, black women are getting divorced at a higher rate than they are getting married. And so when you consider that along with the gender gap, because the gender gap suggests that there are more, there are like 3 million more black women than there are men. And so with that being, so with that being said, if you just did simple math, if every black man got married, you're still going to have 3 million black women that aren't going to be able to be married because it just, there's no inventory. You know what I'm saying? Unless they go to other cultures or things of that sort. So when we got people now who are getting divorced faster than they're getting married, when you, then that means that I know we got single parenting. I get all that when, and we and I could pull up the statistics on how many homes, uh, cause it's a, it's a alarming rate, much more, many more, as percentage wise, more black women that are heads of household and single mothers than there are any other race. So they're left and shouldered with the responsibility of raising children, even when the men are gone, no matter where the men might be. So when they're shouldered with this responsibility, it makes me ask questions. And I asked, I did ask this question uh, even last night, but I had three questions. The first question is why are so many people settling for divorce? The second reason is why are people so comfortable being single and content with dying alone? And the third question is why is this attitude that I don't need a man so pre uh, uh, so prevalent? Now, if is there, if there's a sister that's listening and that wants to answer that question, the phone number is 678-638-6626. Feel free to call in uh, and tell us, answer one of those questions. Why are people so comfortable settling for divorce? Now, when you answer this question, don't answer it just willy nilly. I need you to think when you answer this question because we've shared some history with you that leads that has already explained a lot of how parenting has changed and how she was taught to parent or encouraged to parent. So please consider that when you answer this question. Why are people so comfortable settling for divorce? Why are people comfortable being single and content dying alone? And this is the main question I really want to know. Why is the attitude that I don't need a man so pre prevalent? Let's let, let, let's talk about that question tonight. Well, when they've almost given up hope mm -hmm. in uh, finding a real man. Okay. Because when you look at it today, and I'm going to upset some folk, but I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. What are you talking about? Some of them have gotten so disgusted and um, tired of trying to find that 
they feel like they can be more of a man than a man. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, and they're beginning to live their lives that way. So we have to really get stop and think about where a lot of this comes from. Um, I learned a lot and became a lot because of the nurturing and influence of my mother. Mm -hmm. And most of those that I know were the same way. But when you go back through the annals of time and you analyze and you look at it, the way the nurturing of a mother plays an important part in the raising of a male or female. Absolutely. Because the mama don't teach that girl how to be a mother or a woman, she'll never know. Mm -hmm. If she don't try to instill in that boy, that man, then he'll never become. Now, a man has to see another man in order to become a man. Mm -hmm. But to be a whole complete man, he must see and receive a woman. Absolutely. They work hand in hand. Now, when the women fail to realize balance. their role. It's called balance. Ba and what balance do we have today? No, not much. Children, like I said, can't, can't raise children. Children are raising children. That's the problem. Wow. And, I, and I, I think that's a very dangerous attitude when it, when it, when it, when you got the attitude that I don't need a man. But and this is and I, you know I had some people answer that question. You know, some were saying one one particular young lady said something to the effect that uh that they're having to and this this is a dangerous. She said women don't want to have to raise men because they have mama's boys. And I, I'm like, dang, you must really be speaking from a personal standpoint because I don't. Is is that the prevalent attitude? That and if it is, if it is the prevalent attitude, it makes sense because Willie Lynch said that a court that when mama raised when mama raised the boy, she's basically stopping the process at 16 years old. Mm -hmm. So at that point, he has not really grown. So does that mean that she only had that? And I'm not talking about everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Remember this when I use. I speak in a general context. I don't speak in a specific context because there are single mothers who do awesome jobs. Mm -hmm. There are single mothers who raise lawyers, doctors, send their kids to college, all kinds of things, that whatever. There's, so we understand that. But does that mean, according to even my friend's statement who put that out there about raising son, having to raise other, uh, about having to uh, the, uh, raise, re-raise the kids or whatever, does that mean that a, a woman can only take a boy so far when she's raising it? That's true. Okay. Because there's certain things about being a man. Mm -hmm. You have to learn from another man. Because if it were not true, then a woman could raise a man. Mm -hmm. She cannot. She can raise him to a certain point. But there's certain things you have to get from a man. A lot of the women that are out there, and don't get me wrong, uh, we may be down, but don't count us out. It may be few and far between, but there are still some real women and men out there and that are raising their children, their families, taking care of their homes, doing everything they can to make their home and community better. Oh, yeah. But we have a vast majority that has just thrown their hands up and said, you know, hey, I don't care. Exactly. But that attitude was, I, but you know, so many people, this, this, to me, so many people, and this is a trick, this is a trick of the enemy, in my opinion. He wants you to focus on the symptoms instead of focusing on the source. And to say that I want to be single or I don't need a man because I've been hurt or I've been, that, that, I get that. That's the outcome of what has transpired over time. That's because, um, the African woman was was broken and raised and was and was taught to. Ra okay, we got let, we got a caller coming in. Let's let's see what we got here. They hit that bottom button. Right? Speaker button. All right, thank you for calling the intellectual stew. Who am I speaking with? Kawana Yes. Oh Mr. Lord, Kirkley. you got a thirty second spot. I'm gonna give you number. Like, say it fast, then I'm gonna get you because you ain't getting no ten minutes tonight. I promise you that. <laughs> You will not well, be 10 minutes. I made that comment about we get tired of re-raising some of the men. And that is true because... I wasn't going to put you on uh, Front Street. You put yourself on Front Street, y'all. I did. Just, okay. I, hey, I, right, cool. see, I put it on Facebook so everybody know it anyway. All right, cool. Good. So I dated uh, someone 
we were living together, getting ready to get married. And I was like, why do I always have to tell you when it's time to pay the bills? He lived with his mom. So he said, well, my mom, you know, I want to make sure she was good because she always took care of me. So I called his mother mm. and told his mother what he was doing. And she said, son, that's getting ready to be your wife. I didn't ask you to pay my bills. I didn't ask you to do this, but he was just so used to my mom and my mama. We ended up not getting married because everything was my mom and my mama. But I was like, well, why don't you treat me like you treat your mama and we'll be straight. <laughs> but, but, hey, okay, but you just, uh, and thank you for that call. But you actually just proved my point. <laughs> you actually just proved my point because what happens is, according to Willie Lynch's letter, is that a woman was taught to raise a boy out of a frozen independence, a fr out of frozen fear that she raises him to a point. At, at a certain point, he almost stops at the age of six. The whole learning process for him, according to her teaching him, according to the letter, stops at the age of almost 16, which indicates okay. that you need a man to help push them. And understand this part too, Kawana. Like exactly. I said, understand, exactly. this, un un right. understand this part too. The other part is this. You got a difference when you talk about what's general and what's specific, okay? Your context, it could be very specific. You know, you you had your answer, or you might just attract a certain type of man. I don't know. Because I'm not... No, you know, a lot of women, we got a sister circle. It's just a lot of that going on. But what I think is going back to is that we have been comfortable with this foolishness. Uh, when you get back to the word, like... Um, who was that your your co-host tonight, Uncle Who? What's his name? I didn't call, I didn't call him Uncle nut, Nothing, but he's Tuck. We're going to call him Tuck. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, that was your uncle that was on there before. Okay, yeah. Mr. Tuck. Okay. Uh, when he talked about, you know, I talked to my children about this, Samson and Delilah, Adam and Eve. Okay, well, <clears throat> my statement to this, yes, Eve did her thing, told Adam, hey, try this. But if God created you first and you was ahead, you shouldn't have even submitted to her will because mm -hmm. you were here first. You know. You must have missed, the, you, you must have missed, you must have missed the early part of the show. We and I'm, I'm going to have to go ahead and uh, what, do me a favor. Uh, do me a favor. Do me a favor. You. Go ahead real quick, real quick, because i got to okay, get back on the show. But, um, we didn't, you know, you stray away from it, but, you know, it's only so far that a woman can take a boy and that man needs to step in. Exactly. And we also, as women, need to stop this mess because oh mad at daddy well you can't see your son see that's gonna bite you in your tail in the end absolutely you take him so far just like when i was divorced i was like okay i'll raise them from this age and then 16 then you need to get them and raise them because this right here i don't know <laughs> so everybody got to play their part but then when he would need and i'm like well damn I got to do this, and you do what you exactly. know, but we have to stay in it, in the fold, in the community, because we know what's going on, but, you know, you have to, it's not, we need to stop be, trying to be our children's friends and be their parents. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, thanks for calling in. I'm going to go, I'm gonna have to cut, go now. Do me a favor. Send me a, send me your size, and I'm going to send you a T-shirt, okay? Send me, let, <laughs> let, right. let me know what size you wear, and I'm going to send you a T-shirt. Next caller that calls in, go ahead and hang that up for me. Thank you, Kawana. Okay. Next person that calls in, I'm also going to give away another free T-shirt. Kawana has gotten the first T-shirt tonight, and uh, I'm going to give the next caller that calls in, 678-638-6626. Now, she said some good things, but we got to remember when the man is gone, wherever he is, and understand, all oh, it's, it's a lot of men that have been taken out of society through vagrant laws, through mass incarceration, through an, an alleged war on drugs. It was a whole lot of stuff that has been instituted in our society that helped to bring us down. So when you start talking about, I don't need a man, understand you didn't just come up with that attitude on your own. That attitude was planted years ago and was produced. Look what Willie Lynn said. He said, take the female, run a series of tests on her, see if she'll submit willingly, if she shows any signs of resistance and submitting completely to her will, use the bill wh bull whip on her. But whatever you do, don't kill her because if you do that, in so doing, you are spoiling good economics. Furthermore, 
for fear of the young male's life, the one she's raising, the one Kiwana that you're dating now, the one that your daughters and everybody else's daughters are going to date now, the man that's in this society, the one that everybody is talking about that ain't a real man, but this is the one that women have raised because who's been raising the family for most of these last several years? I wait, amen, lights. Who's been raising them? So, so a lot of women are getting mad at what you produced. Hmm. Well, she said to re-raising a man. That's the, but yeah, let me take it back to the beginning. <laughs> to change this whole thing. The thing is, and one thing like the one I see it. Uh, I'm sorry, my bad. We learn how to settle. A lot of women. Men are settling for whatever they can get. Wow. That's your first mistake. Okay. When you go back to the very beginning, it's just like me and my wife. It starts with you. When you desire to have more, do better, be better, then it'll start. Because okay. a lot of folks are not even desiring to have more or be better themselves. But they ready to hook up with somebody when they ain't together themselves. Well, let, can we talk about that? You got to be together first before you hook up with anybody else to see about let, like oh, have anything. Well, let me ask you a question. I ain't trying to be nosy. Yes, I am. I'm being nosy. You say you've been married how long? It's it's, it's thirty six years. Thirty six. Okay, I thought you said thirty. I thought it was thirty eight. My bad. So thirty six years of it marriage. Like thirty eight. It seemed like thirty eight. Did you? Well, y'all married? Did y'all? Did y'all live together for y'all got married? No, <laughs> no. And the honest <laughs> God's truth is this: I met at church. Okay. I met her, saw her, talked to her, gave me her number. It took me two weeks to call her. Okay. I didn't call her. Two weeks, I called her. Okay. I talked to her on the phone for one hour, and I told her during that conversation, you're going to be my wife. But you didn't live with her beforehand? Nope. No shacking? Nope. Because nope. I'm going to tell you, nowadays, man, since, since I've been... Well, since why I, buy the cow when you can get the milk free? Man, I'm telling you, since I've been single... And I've been, you know, I was married for 20 years. And now I've been single long ago. I was married about 19, 20 years. And I'm I'm three or four years single now. I see so many people giving away married privileges while they're still single. And so I think that, and I know that, that alone has diluted what marriage looks like. Because families are families before they're even family. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. Okay. And you take the blessings out of it. Because there's some things designed by God that are not meant to happen or be obtained outside of the proper structure. Okay. You can try all you want to, but there's certain things that a man and a woman, when they are properly united, married, can take on that couples that's been living together for 30 years cannot do. Yeah. Mysteriously, because God makes a way. I get, I get For it. those that are work following properly, okay. just let me put it that way. Okay. You know, but when we settle and we settle within ourselves by saying we cannot find, no, what you need to do is bite the bullet, like I did and like my wife did. We made up our minds at a certain period of time in our life. She said, I'm not going to be with another man until that man that long, want me to have comes along. Mm -hmm. I said the same thing. And it was hard. Yes, it was. For me, a player, and Lord knows back in the day, I was fine. You know what I mean? I was a stuff and everybody wanted it. Oh, but wow. when I had to cut myself off and say, no, I'm not doing it anymore, it wasn't easy. Wow. It took a lot of struggling. Tears, cold shot, whole nine yards. Just tell the truth. But I was determined that I was not going to do until the Lord sent me that woman. And, but at that point, though, you know, because, you know, a building is only as good as the material you buy to put it together. And the foundation. Yeah, and, and, and the foundation. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have good building foundation, you don't have good material, then that substructure will fall. Oh, yeah. And so now the stuff that we use to build, because the family has been diluted so bad. Now you got two mommy. I ain't going to go into all that kind of stuff. That's a whole other <laughs> subject. And I'm not going to do that. Leave them alone. And I'm going to leave that alone. Now I ain't going to say them. I'm going to leave that alone. But, <laughs> so, but the family has been changed so much because we dilute what a family is, man. Man, my pride and my joy, man, was my wife and my kids. Mm -hmm. And you didn't mess with those, Jack. You understand what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. if you did, I, I there were times I purposely look, made myself look like a fool 
just you know there are certain birds that really can't fight mm. but they'll they'll swell up a certain way you ever seen a cat swell up oh yeah man i'm talking about they'll swell up a certain way to scare the enemy off right mm -hmm. and i would act a fool about mine in front because that was my job because that was my family right but now you got people that are married, you got people raising other people's kids, you got all kind of things going on, and they don't have the genuine love that's necessary to put together a family. Well, when you don't have love to put in it to make it, how are you going to receive love from it? Wow. Because it takes true love. And a lot of y'all women need to listen to me. If he can tell you, baby, I love you, then he can put a ring on that thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Stop settling and accepting excuses well the, and there there but therein lies the reversal of natures because that nature there was a time i mean i know women now that act like dudes and i know some dudes that act like girls too don't get me wrong that that, that i'm not gonna say what they act like but it's it rhymed with you said it right i'm not gonna say it but uh but i but the ro roles have reversed so much man where people are are a trip where men women do act like dudes and dudes do act like women and so when that happens that distorts the ability to put together an effective family because you're giving up hope you're giving up hope because when you when you have no hope and desire you don't see anything better you begin to settle for whatever you can get or whatever you see mm. and a lot of them and when you think about it some of the struggles that a lot of women are going through presently today in trying to find a mate trying to find a man, but trying to find a mate, you you have to throw your hands up and say, well, I can understand. Yeah, I get it. You know, but but my thing is this, baby, don't give up hope. I get it, man. I get it. But I mean, there, but there's such, but that dominance sometimes makes you where you start create, start, you know, <laughs> thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm saying the Holy Spirit, did I say that? Yeah, yeah. Dominance actually leads sometimes to delusion. Because I hear people sometimes, you know, that, that are so strong in their thought process that you can tell them the truth or you can not say anything at all and they'll draw their own conclusion. I know people that basically say, we go together and we, I ain't bit more saying I'm in a relationship with you than the man in the moon. Because that, I think that's what, I mean, that's what leads to the single, I mean, to, as far as the pregnancy out of wedlock and all those types of things. And, and all of those statistics show that if you don't have a two-parent home that is harder for the children to succeed in life. Well, you said dominance leads to pride. And what does pride lead to? Destruction. Destruction. Yeah. So if we have to learn how to control. See, a real man knows how to control or learns how to control himself, his rage. But, what, but, what, nine yards. but what's a real man now? Because so many people... I mean, you hear all these posts, and most, and what's funny to me is you hear most women a talk. A real about, man is the man such as yourself. But li but you I'm, but listen, said let me, let me you got divorced. Okay, did your life end? Well, I thought it did for a couple of months, but I'm straight so now. So you have learned how to make the best out of bad situations and, that's, that's, and keep on going. That's what a real that's man. What a man does. My daddy, my daddy taught me that a real man is one who maintains control at all times. Exactly. So, but 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 when you start looking, most times you hear. Who try to who tries to say what a man real man is? It's usually a woman. Mm -hmm. A real man ain't gonna do this. A real man ain't gonna. Do, how you know? They love to challenge what is not there. Mm -hmm. And seeing a lot of men get intimidated by that. But, but if you doing what you're supposed to do, it's just like jealousy. Jealousy ain't nothing but insecurity. Because when you doing what you know you're supposed to do, you ain't got to be jealous. You don't have to be insecure. So therefore, when you are doing what you're supposed to do and taking care of your responsibilities, you're standing up to be the individual that you're supposed to be. None of us are perfect, but you making it. Absolutely. Then you can open your mouth and say something and proclaim to be man or woman. Absolutely. It's these that are falling far short oh, yeah. that want to jump up and claim. It's just like a man is not determined by how violent he can be. Nope. But that's what they want to tell you, though. And that's what's going and, and on that's, today. And, and see, and that, and that's, and so, and that, I, I'm sorry, y'all. Those that are looking at me in the studio are messing up. But listen, th and that's the thing, Doctor Doctor Connor. I appreciate you for listening tonight, and I'm going to share my story as uh, as we go further. And I, I need some sponsors too, so I'm going to be in contact with you as it relates to some sponsors. But you just said something that's key and critical, bro. Because what's transpiring is, is that back in the day, they used 
the woman to destroy the man, the image of the man, right? I mean, well, you know, well, at first they destroyed the image of the man, and then they did it in front of the woman. And then when she lost respect for him, then she went on with life, right? Yes, yes. And so as we go further, we got the vagrancy laws, we got the war on drugs, the war on drugs. That what? Now how did you have, first of all? How did you fight an invisible war? What was the war on drugs? And everything that they talked about, even the crime bill of 1984, all those things. Whenever they talk, tried to, whenever they want to, whenever they want to try to uh, destroy us, they try to justify it, right? Mm -hmm. And their justification was that whatever was uh, when they talked about a super predator and the three strikes they outlaw and mandatory sentencing and all this dis disproportionate sentence, everything that they put up was an image of who? A black man. And so when they put, that's, that's why now white people can see a black man get shot and not think anything about it because they discredited him and demonized him so much over the years. I mean, throughout slavery, I mean, through blackface entertainment, when they would have blackface uh, puppet shows and all those types of things. I mean, through everything throughout history has been to discredit the black man. But and, and you know what's messed up about it? They did the system did it so good that the sisters started to believe it. Well, they show you how the system works and how it is. How are you going to declare war on something you created yourself? That the, they, because they, drugs, when it first started back in the late fifties. It invaded the black community Absolutely. to destroy the blacks. Absolutely. And it didn't become a problem until the whites started getting hooked to well, what the blacks were. Well, had. when you look at it, Reagan's, they, it, the, the drug war started in, in 84, somewhere around 84. Crack. crack didn't, well, no, crack didn't hit the streets till 86. <laughs> they said they started the drug war in 84, but then crack didn't hit the streets till 86. And then prisons were starting to be full from 87, 88, 89, going on for. And in a 20-year period, the prison system went from 300,000 to over 2 million. And like I tell people, 40% of the 2 million were black men. Where did those, dude, that's 800,000 people. So where did those people come from? They didn't come from Buckhead. Yeah. They didn't come from Roswell. They didn't come from Pleasant Valley. They didn't come from Sandy Springs. They came from Bank, Bankhead Court. They came from Eastgate, those in North, North Little Rock. Those that came, they came from Highland Court. They came from all of these uh, uh, Bowen homes. That's where they went and occupied. See, they serve, they protect and serve out in Roswell, but they occupy in the neighborhood. Yeah. And when they occupied, that's why they got stop and frisk and all these types of things. And they were taking black men away in droves. I mean, uncles. Husbands, grandfathers, nephews, brothers, they're all put in prison. And most of it was because of a trumped up war on drugs about a little crack cocaine that had a smidge of the cocaine in it. Well, the first thing back in the 50s, mm -hmm. when opium was introduced, also as a stretched out part of Jim Crow, they used to say, and part of Jim Crow was, you know, we supposed to be separate but equal. Mm -hmm. When we look at the case of Pleasant versus um, Ferguson, that was the whole issue. Mm -hmm. They want us to be separate but equal. Jim Crow didn't want no equal. No. He wanted us completely separate. Exactly. So when they came out with scheme to introduce the opium or the heroin mm -hmm. to the black community, that was to tab down. Absolutely. To make sure it would never be no equal because what was going on at the time? Blacks had started invading the universities and the Absolutely. college and getting educated and becoming more knowledgeable and about what was going on. Every, so they had to come up with something to stop it. Every time we 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 started to achieve, they tried to tear us down. I mean, the Jim Crow laws were laws meant to marginalize African Americans by deny, denying them the right to vote hold jobs, get education, or other opportunities. That was the purpose of Jim Crow, like you just said. And so, like, even every, like, there was a point during Reconstruction that we represented all the skilled labor in the South hmm. because we did all the work well, look, all those years. Look at what happened in Oklahoma. Yeah. And then and then when we, when we finally get an opportunity to do something, then we build a Tulsa, and then you come and tear it down. Hmm. We build a Rosewood, you go and tear it down. We build a 9th Street district in Little Rock, Arkansas, you go and tear it down. This has happened. Anytime that we have built something in public, they've tried to tear it down. And it's always been on the heels of strong black men 
and your unified family. That's what it's always been on. So, But if you can disrupt and distort that family, you take away the strength that's in our communities. That's why we can sit on the internet every day and downgrade the other. I mean, looking at my timeline on Facebook, a lot of times it's just depressing to see how black men and black women talk towards each other. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's depressing, man, and we're the only ones that do it. Well, that's the only thing they really know because they've given up a lot of hope themselves. Wow. And they're looking for direction. Mm -hmm. Not love. We said that they're joining the gangs now because they want that love. No, they want some direction because you ain't getting no love from no gang. Absolutely. You only get direction, and that direction is how to do what is totally unnecessary. Absolutely. And that's not what the children need. No. We walked away because mother ain't there to really explain or show us or teach us what love really is. Gotcha. Because a man can talk love. Mm -hmm. But a man don't really know love he learns like that, a woman. Knows. He learns that from his mother. That, yeah, that's where exactly. the balance takes place. But you have, you have to also be able to put that dog in him. And that's what I did. I know that's what I did for mine. Hey, listen, it's, uh, the time has come to an end. Uh, we're about to get out of here. I've enjoyed myself. Kawana, I got a T-shirt coming your way, so make sure you inbox me and give me your address and your size. Hey, Disco, go ahead and give me my little outro music. And uh, listen, y'all wish me a happy early birthday. Tomorrow is my birthday. I will be 49 years old. So I'm looking forward to that. Hey, Tuck, Tuck. Yo. Thank you a whole lot for sitting in with me my tonight. Pleasure. Go to Myrtle Beach and you and your wife have a wonderful, wonderful time. Enjoy yeah. yourself. 36 years is a long time. You going to come back and do it one more time with me next week? Uh, yeah. I'm always right. Well, let's do it one more time because I don't think we finished this subject. Hey, but listen, I'm gone. I'm gone. Tomorrow's July 6th. It's the national holiday. Y'all can take off if you want to because it's my birthday. But I'm about to go out and uh, hang out tonight and have a good time. But here's the here's the here's. I want you all to do a couple things. Number this, remember we're on the path to better. And number two, here's the question. The world is changing. Why do you remain the same? Yeah. I'll see you next week. <laughs>